Okay, what I do here is you see these little high spots in the finish line or in the light line in the finish and I go through with a scalpel blade between the first and second coats and I trim these down at least so they're flat on top so that my next coat of finish will take a good smooth lay to the rod. Sometimes it takes a while because you know you might get a, a spool of thread that frays up real easy it seems like NCP thread, thread frays easier than plain thread and that's what I have here in the red so I'm going through and I'm cutting them all down so that my next coat of finish should come out much smoother you can't tell how they been cropped down that one may be a little bit you can see how it's flattened out and this for some reason this wrap here has a lot of minute I usually get a lot in the uh, the uh, weaves because I'm putting so much pressure on the thread anyway that's what I'm doing now before I put my next coat of finish on Well, I'm back at it again. As you can see, um, I trimmed down all these little bumps. You see those little bumps on the first coat of finish. Uh, and I mixed up another batch of finish, my first full coat of finish. There'll be two coats of finish over this because I'm doing the Tiger. Um, I did receive a comment the last time I did this from someone uh, who mentioned that, you know, it'd be better to start with less bubbles than to have more bubbles and try to get rid of them. Well, they're right. Um, I basically did it the last time and this time with um, without even worrying about how many bubbles I created because I wanted to show that the process that I use <clears throat> actually can get rid of uh, those problems. So uh, this time I didn't quite beat it to uh, cake frosting um, <laughs> style, but it's still pretty, um, pretty loaded with bubbles. Now I'm going to put my first full coat on. Try to work around the ca uh, the camera, and then um, I want I, what I wanted you to see is the little specks where I've trimmed off. I don't know that I got every little bump, but I think I got them all. <clears throat> and I'm going to put this coat of finish on. So, here we go. i got to work around the camera, so please bear with me. I think part of the problem with working around the camera is not just the camera, but um, this uh, big old beer belly I got in the way, so. But we get it done. Oh, I got me a little piece of the brush in there. Which is good because that will give me a, a chance to show you how I get rid of that stuff, too. Um, I have a little process when I start putting my full coats on or when I think it's going to be my last coat I really uh, work hard to get any tiny little pieces of lint or whatever out of the wrap. Okay, now I'm gonna do like I told you uh, that I always do. I always do a little flattening this way with the brush Now I haven't done the whole wrap, I'm just doing a portion of it to show you um, what I'm working with as far as getting rid of the bubbles. So,
and virtually the bubbles are all gone I gotta get this one little piece of brush out Oop. used the wrong thing Now my camera battery is starting to wear down, so let's hope that it makes it through this portion. Okay. Now I do see a couple of little pieces of lint in there. And it'll be the same routine. I won't be able to do it with... Um, I won't be able to take them out with the camera in my way but I will go through with this pair of tweezers and pick out any little imperfections I see uh, I saw a couple there somewhere and I'll just reach in and pick them out I'll try to do this one which is almost impossible with this camera in the way Anyway, you, you can see the process, and then I do the same thing with, uh, you know, 10 seconds, or start off with 10 seconds, turn it for 10 seconds, and work my way up to a minute, and end up doing it before I put it on the dryer itself, um, I'll, ha I'll have done it uh, four or five rotations with a minute each. You can see how it's it's really pretty level right now. This will get real level when I put my final coat on because uh, well actually there'll be another layer of thread going over it so I need three layers to get the kind of separation I want for my first and second layers. So there we go got rid of the little nubs and bumps and things and uh, now I'll pull out all the lint and um, put it up on the dryer okay just a little fill in here I've uh, put my second coat of finish on and you can see it's leveling out quite nice I'm currently on my last couple of one minute uh, turn routines but uh, you can see that the little lumps and bumps and scratch marks that I made cutting out the lint are all gone at this point and uh, I'm getting ready to put it up in the rack just wanted to show you what it looked like when it was all done well this is it thought I'd try to do this by holding the camera by hand see if I can show what this looks this tiger looks like remember this is how I tied off the um, weave that I did in between the first and second guides did a little JTOB in there under the first guide Back into the tiger. There's the weave. Back into the tiger. And what I usually like to do is put the fanciest stuff closer to the handle. And up here you see I just put a couple of trim bands in the middle. And further up the rod all I did was inlays. So you can't, I don't know if you can see or not how. The wave turned out, but or the uh, tiger turned out, but it turned out really good. Then the JTOPs I did on either side of the weave are a little more simple than the one underneath the foot of the guide, but still quite attractive. I tried to pack them in tighter than I did the one under the guide because the one under the guide is actually two threads, um, two different colored threads in the JTOB. 
I'm going to try doing this also outside to see what uh, what I can get out of it that way. I'm just trying to show the movement of the thread in the tiger. So that's how I knit it up. I'm pretty happy with it and the finished job looks pretty okay too. Let's see what it looks like outside. All right, now I'm uh, done with all the finish, at least on this part of the rod. Wanted to see if I could uh, do this by hand and go down and show the changing patterns. I don't know if this is going to work, but give it a shot. Here's the weave section. the tie-offs with the JTOB. I did that with just one thread and then um, on down the rod here back into the Tiger. See the changing pattern I hope. JTOB underneath the guide that um, has two threads in it and back into the Tiger wrap and the changing patterns. I don't know if this is coming out. We'll see. I did it inside too to see which one has the best results. Um, really happy with the Tiger on this one. Pretty happy with the overall build. Finish came out good. I'm going to take some close-ups now to post the individual pictures so that you can all get good looks at the JTOBs and the wrap itself. Okay, be posting this soon. Thank you.